Hello everyone, my name is Polish. What? Alright, I'm sleepy. But whatever. My name is Polish Lynx and this is Everlasting Summer. Next episode of many. Let's continue because we are in catacombs. But we had no choice left. Alright, let's go. The stones scattered beneath our feet, I desperately tried not to fall down, holding my hand with the torch out in front and dragging Alisa with the other. She ran along in silence, breathing heavily. I really wanted to look back at her, but didn't have the strength or time. Finally, the outline of the open door appeared before us and I leaped into the bomb shelter, reading myself to fight any food that was there. But the room was empty. I swept my eyes across the room, trying hard to spot hidden monsters. Shurik or any other evil entity, but it was all exactly the same as it was the first time we'd been here. Except for the door, the second door, it was open. Somebody has passed through here. I spoke up triumphantly. Who? Don't know, maybe it was Shurik. But how did he manage to open it? Who the hell cares? Come on. There was another corridor behind the door, and it was ascending slowly. So we are getting closer to the surface. I was right, after several hundreds of feet, I stumbled upon a ladder, leading to a small hatch on the ceiling. It didn't take much effort to open it. What's up there? Who cares, it's better than staying down here anyway. I climbed the ladder and found myself surrounded by gloom. However, this gloom was definitely lighter than the darkness of the catacombs. As my eyes got more used to it, the outlines of the walls, the ladder, and the door leading to the outside were emerging in the pale moonlight. I helped Alisa climb up and we literally sprang out of the building. The exit from the catacombs was located in some sort of ruined building that resembled either a nursery or a country school. It must be the old camp. Alisa sat on one of the swings and weaved a sweet sweat from her forehead with the back of her hand. I see, so we found it after all. I smiled involuntarily. What are you laughing at? She frowned and pouted with displeasure. To put it shorty, she'd returned to her usual self. So, it's not so scary here anymore. I wasn't scared there either. Ah, oh, come on. That's right, I wasn't. Ah, uh, whatever. I was angry. I really felt hurt because of Alisa. If not for me, she would have still been down there. In that day in mine. Where are you going? She asked in a less self-assured voice as I turned around and walked slowly towards the camp. Back to the camp. Hey! Alisa jumped up right away and started to walk next to me. For a moment I wanted to say something nasty, but I wasn't ready to start the next argument. We found the path we had taken before surprisingly fast, even the two holes we'd fallen into. It was only about 200 meters from the old camp. I stopped at the square and turned to Alisa. Well, well, she looked uncertain, even confused. Then, sure, deep inside I wanted to yell at her, to scold her, even to insult her. On the other hand, I wanted to have a meaningful conversation. In the end, I just kept silent, turned around and slowly headed towards the leader's cabin. But something persistently disturbed me the quiet of the night. I keenly listened to it and realized that it was the snoring. Of Shurik was sleeping peacefully on a bench. Hey! I caught Alisa, who hadn't walked too far away. Get up, you! Shurik slowly came to his senses and stared at us blankly. Oh, is it morning already? Morning? Yeah, sure. Sometimes one acts first, thinks later. Of course, it all starts in the brain. That the current comes through their neural rings, thereby transmitting the command to the body. But sometimes the subconsciousness just works faster than the consciousness. That's exactly why my fist swung and smacked Shurik in the guts, and it was only then that I realized what I'd done. He coughed, trying to catch his breath, and writhed in pain of the bench. What the hell was all that about? I already felt bad about it. I shouldn't have treated him so rough. 
What are you, what are you talking about? Shriek looked at me in shock. In the mine. What mine? He turned his head, completely confused. And why am I here? And why are you here? Stop fooling around! I subbed in the conversation. You nearly killed me there, and now you're going to pretend like nothing happened? What happened? You really don't remember? Not a thing. Ah, uh, so what is the last thing you do remember? She tried to concentrate. Well, I was on my way to the old camp in the morning. I knew I could find some hardware for the robot there, so... So? And that's all. I don't recall anything since then. Then I just woke up here. I let out a heavy sigh as I turned away. Well, go ahead, sweet dreams. Hey, where are you? I ignored Alisa and stumbled away to the Olga's Dimitrievna's cabins. She stayed arguing with Shurik. I sat in the deck chair and looked up the at the stars. This night they seemed to be brighter than usual. Perhaps they seemed so because not so long ago my only source of light was a dim flashlight and then the torch. The stars are brighter than a flashlight and obviously a torch. Most of the stars, I guess, are even brighter than the sun, but they are so far away. So, why have you come? I asked without even turning my head, Alisa's footsteps could be heard well in advance in the silence of the night. Well, hey! What did Shurik say? He said that he doesn't remember anything, that it's unscientific and nonsense like that. I think he really doesn't remember because of shock and stress. Who am I to stay? I was in the same boat not too long ago. I'm still in it, though. Do I have amnesia? Well then, why did you come here? Then again, I guess I knew the answer. That's exactly why I hadn't gone to sleep but waited for her here. Well, hi! I just sat down next to me. Kind of wanted to thank you after all down there. You that you know? No problem. I said gently and leaned back. Well, alright then. She got up and was going to go. If you think that I'm angry with you, I'm not. Everything is okay. I didn't actually think that. I said to work up. Fine then. Okay. Yeah. Then. Just go already. I said kindly and waved my hand. I go when I want. So now you don't want to. I want to. Well, is something preventing you from going? Muram! Alisa stamped her foot and quickly walked away from the leader's cabin. I took a deep breath and stood up. My head was terribly dizzy from fatigue. Well, at least Olga Dimitrievna is sleeping already and I won't have to explain anything. However, it wasn't that easy. The camp leader was standing in the middle of the room and was obviously preparing for a lengthy conversation. Or rather, for a debriefing. Would you care to explain? What's the matter? In fact, you didn't mind when we were going to search for Shriek. And what? Have you found him? It looks like she was more concerned about me going back late than the fate of the lost pioneer. Yeah, we have. By the way, why are you standing here in the darkness? What? I said, why in the darkness? Because it's time to sleep. I couldn't agree with her more, although I was slightly surprised by such an abrupt mood swing. I just barely stumbled to my bed and collapsed on it without undressing. But still, Alisa. Alisa. I just didn't know what I should think of her. It wasn't because she'd been acting strange recently. No, on the contrary, all of her behavior was quite consistent and understandable. Even her returning to thank me. I thought of Alisa much more than anything else that had happened tonight. Although, if you get down to it, there was nothing supernatural about it. Uncomfortable, sure. Frightening. Even spine chilling, sure. Something related to my arrival here, hardly. These thoughts to put me to sleep. Day 5. Here we go, day 5.
we run and we skip a lot of text. Oh, that's the moment. That's the moment. Then I get run. Where to, where to, kitchen dining hall, aka canteen. Wait. Didn't I do that already? Oh, I remember, I went all, I went to the infirmary before. Let's go there. Hello. But I thought I was in the canteen in one of the routes. Alright. Hmm. Huh. Lena? I don't know if that was a good idea. Oh crap, I think that was a bad idea. Uh, well, I might have just, I might have just made a terrible mistake twice. Unfortunately. I don't want to know why are you doing that robot actually. But that doesn't matter. Uh, infirmary. To our lovely Viola. And we are running with beer hidden under the shirt. Don't tell anyone. Library. And we are staying on guard. And after that we will go on the hike. It might take a while, but I think we'll be that the tree looks bad. <laughs> the one picture. Try to find out what Alice and Len are arguing about. Wait, 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 what? Only an Alice has to out among all this splendor. Well, of course, it was quite natural for Alice to be arguing with someone like that. But hearing Len talk in raised voice, I came closely, son, closer silently, trying to understand what was going on. Now you listen to me! Think whatever you want, I've said everything. It looks serious. I tried as hard as I could, to not attract any attention, and look like I'm just standing there with no intention of listening in on them. There is nothing to think about, everything is as clear as day. Don't try to wind me around your little finger that, like that, I know you too well. Why, of course you know everything, then why won't you tell him yourself? Then I was getting angry, that Ellen was really worried, weird. Even considering that I didn't know what they were arguing about. That's none of your business. I just snorted, turned around and her eyes met mine. Second later, Lena gave me a look as well. The girl stood there in confusion for some time. You're uh, eavesdropping. Me? Ah, uh, no, no, no. I was just like passing by. I put on the best smile I had, but it didn't seem to help much. By the way, today he was peeking at me, eh, uh, peeping at me. Isa gave me a malicious smile. Lina looked at me questioningly. First of all, why would she believe that these devious foxes stories? I didn't peep. 
You know quite well that it was an accident. Liana should be the one to blame. Sure it was, tell that to the cops. It seems like my excuse was not working. Did you like my boobs? <laughs> Alright, that was not included in the natural. A shiver ran up my spine. Is that true? Lena look, looked at me imploringly. Well, you see, El, it was an accident. I didn't see anything there. You didn't? Well, I can show you again. <laughs> Alisa cried in anger. I didn't know what to say. You see, I told you. No, no. Then I started to mumble and rushed away a moment later. Wait, what happened? I shouted after her. You see what you did? This girl is upset now. She gave me a spitful smile. First of all, it was me who upset her. Second, I don't have any idea what you were you two were arguing about. I was running out of patience. Why should I tell you? It seems like she thought that our talk was over and was about to leave. I grabbed her hand abruptly. Isaac glanced at me in fear but didn't say anything. I was angry at that moment, really angry. First, I was wildly enraged that Lena was upset because of me, even though I was actually kind of guilty. Second, I was enraged by Alisa's insults. Let's end the episode here. We will get to know what they were talking about, maybe, in the next episode. See you then, bye!